Good day, Wonder Nurses. I'm Nurse Anne. Our topic for today is all about maternal and child health nursing. I prepared some Q&A as well as important terms and key points to remember. We have seven questions to answer and you are given one full minute for each question. After answering, the correct answer and rationale will be given. Then at the end of the video, I will share some important key points to remember. So prepare your pen and paper and let's start.
Here are some important terms to remember. Probable signs of pregnancy. Chadwick's sign. A discoloration of the mucous membranes of the cervix, vagina, and vulva due to increased vascularity. Goodell sign. The softening of the cervix. Hager's sign. The softening of the lower uterine segment. Balotment. It is the rebounding of the fetus when the examiner taps or palpates the cervix. Gravida. This refers to a pregnant woman. Gravidity. Refers to the number of pregnancies. Parity. It refers to the number of births. Lecithin to sphingomyelin ratio. The normal LS ratio in amniotic fluid is 2 is to 1 or greater when the lungs of the fetus are already mature. This ratio is used to predict fetal lung maturity. Quickening A fetal movement that the expecting mother feels in her uterus. Surfactant It is a phospholipid that is needed to keep the fetal lung alveoli from collapsing. Lastly, gynecoid The normal female pelvis Question number one. The clinical instructor asked the student nurse to describe the process of fetal circulation through the umbilical cord. Which of the following statement is correct? Blood pumped by the embryo's heart leaves the embryo through two umbilical arteries. When oxygenated, the blood is returned by one umbilical vein. Arteries carry deoxygenated blood and waste products from the fetus, and veins carry oxygenated blood and provide oxygen and nutrients to the fetus. Recall the three umbilical vessels are within the umbilical cord, two arteries and one vein, and that the veins carry oxygenated blood and the arteries carry deoxygenated blood. Therefore, the correct answer is B. The two arteries in the umbilical cord carry deoxygenated blood and waste products away from the fetus to the placenta. Question number two. A pregnant client tells the nurse in the healthcare clinic that she is experiencing irregular contractions. Nurses know the term means that the client is experiencing Braxton Hicks constructions. Based on this assessment, which nursing action is correct? Braxton Hicks contractions are irregular, painless contractions that may occur intermittently throughout pregnancy. It occurs and is normal in some pregnant women during pregnancy. Therefore, the correct answer is C. Inform the client that it is normal and may occur throughout the pregnancy. Question number three. Nurse Cloud is instructing a pregnant client with HIV infection about breastfeeding after delivery. Which of the following statement is correct? HIV transmission can occur during the antepartum period, labor and delivery, or the postpartum period if the mother is breastfeeding. Breastfeeding is not recommended for HIV patients. Therefore, the correct answer is C. You will need to bottle feed the newborn. Question number four. The nurse is evaluating a pregnant client with type 1 diabetes mellitus regarding her understanding of changing insulin requirements during pregnancy. Which statement by the client signals the nurse that teaching is necessary? The correct answer is A. During the first three months of pregnancy, I will need to increase my insulin dosage. Since the pancreas produces more insulin and the peripheral nervous system is more sensitive to it during the first trimester of pregnancy, insulin levels need to decrease. Other statements are accurate and signify that the client understands how to control her diabetes during pregnancy. Question number five. Following an amniotomy, 
a nurse should first assess? The correct answer is A, the fetal heart rate pattern. Fetal heart rate is assessed immediately after a myotomy to detect any changes that may indicate cord compression or prolapse. Blood or distension or maternal blood pressure would not be the first thing to check after an amniotomy. When the membranes are ruptured, minimal vaginal examinations will be done because of the risk of infection. So what is amniotomy? It is also known as the artificial rupture of the membranes. It increases the risk of cord prolapse and infection. Meconium-stained amniotic fluid may indicate fetal distress. Bloody amniotic fluid may indicate fetal trauma or abrupt placenta, while an unpleasant odor may be associated with infection. Question number six. Nurse Moon is monitoring a patient in labor. Which of the following would indicate that she will suspect an umbilical cord compression on the external monitor trace during a contraction? Early decelerations result from pressure on the fetal head during a contraction. Variable decelerations occur if the umbilical cord becomes compressed, reducing blood flow between the placenta and the fetus. Variability refers to fluctuations in the baseline fetal heart rate, while accelerations are a reassuring sign and usually occur with fetal movement. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Question number 7. Patient Z is in her second trimester and was admitted due to a suspected diagnosis of abruptio placenta. Which of the following findings would indicate that the assessment is correct? Abruptio placenta is the premature separation of the placenta from the uterine wall after the 20th week of gestation and before the fetus is delivered. Painless, bright red vaginal bleeding in the second or third trimester of pregnancy is a sign of placenta previa. In abruptio placenta, acute abdominal pain is present. Uterine tenderness accompanies placental abruption, especially with the central abruption and trapped blood behind the placenta. The abdomen feels hard and board-like on palpation as the blood penetrates the myometrium and causes uterine irritability. Therefore, the correct answer is C. To learn more about the complications of pregnancy, check the link in the description of this video. Finally, here are some important key points to remember. First, the placenta is impermeable to large particles like bacteria, but it is permeable to nutrients, medications, antibodies, and viruses. Folic acid supplements should be taken by women of childbearing age to prevent neural tube defects and orofacial clefts in the developing fetus. The rubella vaccine is not administered during pregnancy because the live attenuated virus may cross the placenta and harm the developing fetus. Oral hypoglycemic agents are not recommended during pregnancy. Signs of preeclampsia, hypertension, generalized edema, and proteinuria. Lastly, the frequency and duration of contractions increase during actual labor. While in false labor, contractions are irregular and do not result in dilation, effacement, or descent. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned and understand something. If you want more videos, don't forget to subscribe. See you next.